the Atmos FX Jack O' Lantern Jamboree digital decoration is a fan favorite for many reasons. Today we will be reviewing how we can map them to any physical location or setup using both the free and paid versions of DaVinci Resolve. Be aware that this tutorial is a continuation of several others in this series. If you haven't already viewed the videos on project settings, creating a map file, and duplicating pumpkin faces in Fusion, be sure to go back and review them first. Let's begin with how to do this in the free version. Unfortunately, Standard Edition does not include the ability to display a second screen preview through the projector. This is where the mapping file comes in. We will need this in order to place the pumpkin faces onto the correct location. With your project already open, click on the Fusion page icon. With Fusion open, import your map file directly onto the nodes pane. This will automatically add it to your media pool. We want to add this toward the beginning of our linked line in order to ensure it is behind our pumpkin faces. With this layout, anything that is closest to the media out node is technically layered on top of everything that comes before it in the line. Notice that these merges have both a green and yellow arrow. Anything connected to the yellow arrow is treated as a background for anything connected into the green arrow, which acts as the foreground. Select the original background node at the beginning, and then add a merge node from the toolbar by selecting this icon. Connect the map file to the merge node. You can see the map appears behind the pumpkin faces because it is now technically a background for them. Select the transform node that connects the first pumpkin face. Move and resize as needed in order to place it onto one of the mapped pumpkins. Currently it is difficult to tell if it is placed correctly, but we can fix that. Select the merge node that connects this chain. Head over to the inspector menu on the right hand side and look for the blend property. Bring this slider down enough so that we can see through the pumpkin face, while leaving it visible enough to place it. Now reselect the transform node and position and resize the pumpkin face to fit within the boundary we drew in the map file. We can zoom in using the control key and moving the middle mouse wheel forward. We can quickly zoom back out again by selecting fit from this drop down menu. Since there are only four pumpkins to map to in this image, let's disconnect one of them. Next, we will reduce the blend value of the second pumpkin and then move and resize it as needed using the transform node. Repeat this for all remaining pumpkin faces. When all the faces are arranged, make sure to select each merge node that connects them and bring the blend value back up to one. Disconnect the map file at the beginning of the line. No need to delete it since you might need to reference it again. Just leave it there disconnected. If you are still connected to your projector and your multi-display is still set to duplicate, you can preview this by heading over to the edit page, then hold the control key down, and hit F on your keyboard. This will take you to a full screen preview. If you have a higher powered computer, you can attempt to play this back. If you have a lower powered machine, you can just click through to make sure everything looks correct. In a future video, we will explore how we can improve playback on lower powered systems. Everything looks good here. And now that we have the effects completed and mapped through the adjustment clip, we can apply it to any of the Jack-O-Lantern Jamboree videos. Simply delete the one current one on the timeline, and then add the next video and underneath the adjustment clip. Extend or reduce the adjustment clip as needed. Let's save this project real quick by going up to File, then selecting Save Project. Going forward whenever we want to make a new Jamboree video, we just have to reopen this project and add the new clips accordingly. If you have Resolve Studio, which is the paid version of the software, mapping becomes much easier since we will no longer need a map file. Do note that even though we don't need a map file for placement, we still need to ensure that the project settings match the native resolution of the projector. While connected to your projector, make sure the display setting is set to extend these displays. Back in Resolve, navigate to the Workspace menu. Then select Video Clean Feed. Then choose Monitor 2. This will display a real-time preview of your composition through your projector. Using the transform nodes for each pumpkin face, move and resize as needed until each one is placed as you desire. Once your project is complete, you can render this out to be played in a media player. Before rendering, double-check one last time that the display resolution will be correct. We now have our digital display mapped to a set of physical pumpkins and we did it in a way that will allow us to manipulate additional pumpkin displays quite easily going forward. 
If you found the Fusion page in Resolve to be too confusing, we will be covering an alternate process in a future video that can produce the same result. I hope you were able to get your display up and running. If you need help, just ask a question in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to this channel for future videos on how Resolve can kick your digital displays up an extra notch.